Publisher Arthur Salzberger announced that executive editor Jill Abramson was out and that Dean Baquet would take over effective immediately. That news came as a shock to many in the Times newsroom and many more in our industry. Abramson, the first female to run that paper in its more than 160 years, had only been in the position for about two and a half years. There have been many reports and rumors about what led to her ouster, and we'll get to some of those in a minute. But first, let's hear from Abramson herself, speaking to graduates at Wake Forest University's commencement on Monday. You know, New York Times journalists risk their lives frequently to bring you the best news report in the world. That's why it is such an important and irreplaceable institution. And it was the honor of my life to lead the newsroom. A couple of students who I was talking to last night after I arrived, uh, they know that I have uh, some tattoos. And one of them asked me, are you going to get that Times T that you have tattooed on your back removed? Not a chance. <laughs> that may have been a brave face, or Abramson may be gearing up for a fight. See, that's because several of the reports out there indicate Salzberger got rid of her because she complained she was being paid less than her predecessor, Bill Keller. Salzberger issued a statement denying that and citing problems with her aggressive management style, something he didn't appreciate as much. Maybe you saw this cover of the New York Post featuring a photo of Abramson in the gym, out in boxing gloves, poised to take on a full-size punching bag. That photo had originally been posted on Instagram by her daughter. There is so much going <laughs> on here. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I was watching the graduation speech, as a lot of other people were, too, wondering whether she was going to take the gloves off or not, and she didn't. I mean, I think she did the right thing in the way she handled that occasion. I don't know that that has any reflection at all on what she's going to do going forward or the issues that people have laid out as to why she was fired. The New Yorker went into quite a bit of depth in two pieces that talked a little bit about maybe the inside story about why this is and, and sort of pointed out the fact, uh, like all good journalists, Jill Abramson was probably a little bit difficult to get along with at times, probably didn't answer to authority all that well. Some of the very same things that you look for in a good journalist mm -hmm. uh, are sometimes the things that maybe can run you afoul with management if you're a little too direct. And that seems to be the case here. That, and that would have been an interesting enough story, as it were, to see whether or not being brusque and pushy, as some people described her, is okay for male executives, but not okay for female executives. Would have made for a great story if it had just stopped right there. But then Ken Aletta from The New Yorker yes. and David Folkenflik from NPR were both reporting that also she was fired for having the temerity to raise the question about her not being paid as much as her predecessor as executive editor. And that really pushed the, the pedal down when it came to social media and other people covering the story. Not only did she challenge uh, the uh, the ownership of the Times on that issue, but that she also uh, apparently hired an attorney to take it one step further and to find out once and for all perhaps whether the the fact was true. And this is this is an industry problem. It continues to be an industry problem where women uh, oftentimes don't get paid as much as men. It's one of those things that in lots of contracts. I had a contract that I I was sworn to secrecy on for years in television, and so you don't really know until somehow you might find out, and by then. And usually it does kind of put you in that situation. I don't know that we will ever find out. We probably will not find out for sure exactly what Jill Abramson's compensation package was, not just her salary, but stock options and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and whether or not she was making less. But it really doesn't matter at this point because, frankly, the Times and Arthur Sulzberg, they lost that spin war. I mean, the, 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 the meme that's out there right now on almost every news story, except for a few more nuanced mm -hmm. pieces in print, and on every social media post is all about how she was fired because she dared to raise questions about salary. So let me ask you, was that fair? So these pieces in the New Yorker, the Ken Yelato piece, the full conflict piece, have we gone deep enough to try and get both sides of that story to try and flesh it out? Or have we just so tightly hung on to that narrative of the equal pay, of the attitude and brusque nature and male, female, that we've just hung on to it and that's what is going to last? Well, I mean, I will say that there's been plenty of coverage when Salzberger came out and denied that it was about money and mm -hmm. gave more detail about why she was fired and said that, in fact, that her pay isn't the only, you know, the salary 
salary wasn't the only part of her compensation. That was reported. But even when you saw those stories being reported, you still see the headlines. You still see the graphics at the lower third graphics and television coverage. They oversimplify it or boil it down to fired because of salary, question mark. And that's as far as a lot of people get with it. And that's where the narrative is now. And I think the narrative could evolve, especially as we find out more about the leaked memo that you mentioned off the top of the show that I know we'll get into yeah. where the, the narrative could turn. But Mike's right. Where it is right now is very solidly that they're losing that spin war. So another piece of this story that has also been lost in a lot of this is the elevation of Dean Baquet as the new executive editor at the New York Times. And just as Abramson was the first female executive editor, Baquet is the first African-American executive editor. In a different situation, under different circumstances, that would be the story here. That'd be a big story. And and I think it, eventually there will be plenty written about his elevation to the Times, especially if he manages to calm the waters and continues to win awards and all of that. But I will say that he's also a player in this whole business about Abramson getting fired. And if you look at some of the stories, they reported that perhaps the real reason or one of the biggest pushes that led to him her being fired was the fact that she tried to bring on an editor for digital, somebody she knew, a female editor from The Guardian, and apparently didn't tell Baquet that she was going to be doing this in advance. He, if you re- believe some of the reports, Mm -hmm. threatened to walk if something wasn't done about that. So if you're a Sulzberger, you're left with, do I choose between the first female editor, whom I don't get along with, the first African-American editor? What do I do? Who I do. Yeah, who I do. Then what? Yeah, and and this this becomes a he says, she says, where I'm not sure anybody really wins. A lot of reputations are sullied in as much as all of us are paying attention to it. Well, we've spent a lot of time on this story today, and before we move on, I want to bring up the reaction of one journalist, one of the most well-known voices on public radio, Ira Glass. Monday, a reporter from The New Yorker magazine asked Glass for his reaction to Abramson's firing while he was at the Peabody Awards in Athens, Georgia. His response? Jill who? You can read the full interview, the full Mm. Q&A underneath the uh, programs tab on our links blog at kbia.org. And I hope people check it out because it raises a good point. Do people outside of our little echo chamber even care about this? Well, you know, in this particular instance, I think they should. I get it that sometimes there's just too much navel gazing. The media think that they're more important than they really are. But this is a story about sexism in the news business. And, I mean, you don't have to agree that that's why she was fired, but it raises some really interesting questions. And you have a link on our blog to a study that was released recently that shows that it's still a big Mm -hmm. problem. And we've talked about it here in the past few weeks. On the other hand, I don't have a problem. I mean, I think it's kind of refreshing in a way, right, that Ira Glass can say, I was too busy working on my own stuff. I don't pay attention to that. Sometimes in our own bubble, we do uh, maybe uh, overdo the importance of who we are as opposed to what it is that we're doing. I think he's just shining a light on the fact that once the lights go down. Although I thought that Od- Od Gawker was really interesting because when they ran the story, their comment section was pretty hilarious. There was one person in there who goes by Bed and Breakfast Man who made had a really interesting parody mm-hmm. of, of Ira Glass in This American Life. Today's theme, washing dishes. Three stories about washing dishes. Why do we <laughs> wash dishes? What compels some people to wash dishes right away while others can wait? Hours, sometimes even days. That was a pretty hilarious and straight-on parody well, of this American some life. Some of those comments are great. I like the one that you pulled there. Some of them have some language that's a little too colorful for <laughs> us to be talking about right. here on KBIA. But do check that out.